So, I have a that guy story. Yeah, Hank, Hank I've got one about the that guy you see in FPS games. Now, he and I we went to high school together. We were actually good friends because we were both assholes. So that's why we got along great. We hated everybody. We were douchebag. So, towards senior year, I'm going off to college. He joins the military. He was off into the Marines. Around this time, uh, I actually I had picked up, uh, or yeah, we were playing uh, Bad Company 2 a lot together. Because he had the game and he was good at it and I was good at it on Xbox. So we were a good team. He goes off and he gets goes off to training. A few months later, he comes back home with an injury. Apparently he broke his ankle. What ended up happening is he was mouthing off to his COs on the first day and then shut up. And then when he like broke his ankle on like the last week of training, he, they gave him an option. They said, well, you can go home and wash out or you can heal up here and continue. He's like, well, I'll go home because that's the logical choice. I can come back, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, sure, totally, you can't. He still comes <laughs> home. Uh, he then joins the army. The army takes him in after he heals up. And they say, okay, so, here's what's gonna happen. You went almost all the way through training. You went far enough that you don't have to basically do basic training. We just have to get a class up to your level. So you get to wait around on base, basically doing nothing, and get to act as the poster child for the COs, and get to do pretty much nothing, and have it super easy, up until the class is ready to start training with you. So he gets used to make an example of, for in front of the other kids, where it's like, oh, he can get Gatorade and pop from the pop machine, doesn't have to, like, wait where the other kids can't, because they're not that far in the training yet, they can't get that as a reward. So... What ends up happening is he gets pissed off one day and beats a kid pretty badly with a padlock and gets dismissed. What? what? I, I didn't know about this until he, Yeah, I, I didn't know about this up until he came home and like he was just pissed off at the guy. Like the kids were just like, yeah, they're just all giving him shit, and he like got pissed off and beat a kid down with a padlock. So I didn't know this, like, I didn't know this little fact until he came back. He's like, yeah, I'm back from the army, guys. And I went over to my other friend's house because he absolutely was begging me to show up so that he didn't have to spend this whole time with this kid who, um, I'll just call him army guy. He's my best friend, his sister, actually, his younger sister invited over army guy and a bunch of her friends. Oh, private and he was pile. just begging me. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, private what? Yeah, private pile. Yeah, private pile. So, Private got invited over with a bunch of other uh, friends of my best friend's younger sister. So he was begging me, he's like, dude, dude, you gotta come over here, we can do whatever the hell you want. I just do not want to be like... I'm, um, cigarettes and they're taking a smoke. Private Pile was like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna be kind of looking for new work, you know, it's kind of shitty, you know, I got screwed over again by the army. And we're all like, oh, well, you know, how? How did you, how did you get screwed over by the army this time, dude? I mean, you said you got screwed over by the marines, and then they wouldn't, they stopped talking to you, so how did the army screw you? <laughs> he's like, oh, well, he's like, oh, well, you know, I kind of beat a kid with a padlock and they dismissed me. And it's at that point, we're just like, oh. We got silent. And I was like, okay, so why did you beat a kid with a padlock? He's like, oh, well, it made me mad. So we're sitting next to him, one of us on either side of him. And we're just like, oh, okay. And he's like, yeah, you know, I'm thinking of applying... Yeah, we started inching away from him. He was like, yeah, you know, I'm thinking of applying to, like, Target for the time being, you know, just kind of get a job going while I'm trying to think of something else. And we're like, oh, okay, dude, that's cool. And he's like, yeah, you know, I really want to build something, like, you know, because I worked at a hardware store at the time, so he's like, yeah, dude, I, I totally want to, like, build something with you and, like, do something crazy. And we're like, oh, yeah, sure, dude, whatever you want to do. It's, it's cool, man. Because I love doing crazy ideas and, like, crafty, like, crafty shit with, like, making potato cannons. He's like, yeah, can we make a gun, like a potato cannon, and have it fire padlocks? I was just like, uh, no, we can't. What? What's with the padlock? Padlock-based offense. Maybe. A joke. 
and ran with it and like took it way too far. Also, his wow. other question was, was he still remembered as that douchebag from high school? The answer, of course, being yes. Yes, he was. Private padlock. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I stopped talking to him after that night. He kept asking why I wasn't ever on Vegas or, or um, Rainbow Six Vegas 2 or on Battlefield anymore. Maybe because you beat like, people with padlocks. Exactly. I, I never told him that. I was just like, oh yeah, dude, I'm, I'm always busy, you know. I'm working two jobs, going to college. I just don't have time anymore, you know? Oh my god, he yeah. tried so, not beating people with padlocks. We just didn't even ever bring it up. We're just like, okay, we're never talking to this kid again. So, I think, actually, last time I saw something from him, like, he had lots and lots of issues. But, um, like, he was always on Facebook whining, complaining about stuff, and he, I think he got let go from Target because they realized what he did. And they're like, yeah, no, we don't want you working here anymore. So I think he ended up moving down to, like, South Carolina or something. And he's working down there doing God knows what. I have no idea, though. Like, I kind of, like, have like lost a really touch with terrible them. joke involving the clan, but I'm not gonna do that. That would not surprise me. At all. This kid was one of those where he'd, like, take a joke way too far, and then actually get you serious about it. someone who can beat a person with a padlock. I've got your man right here. Oh, oh my god, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my> god. <laughs> god damn. <laughs> I did see that. It was, was terrible. <laughs> no, it's not all terrible. Right. It's the best it's thing ever. You're surrounded by a bunch of Jews, and all you got out is a padlock. Now, here's what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. See, I can make jokes about the clan because I lived in the one state of the union that was actually ran by the camp by the clan in the 1920s. In the union. In the Union, yeah. Indiana, in 1928, the Klan party, the political party, literally ran the governorship and both the state legislatures. How about well, aren't that? you proud? Oh, it's, oh god, it's pretty awful, actually. <laughs>